Hello, welcome to the Rooted Souls podcast. My name is Becca Spear, and I will be your hostess. Here I am offering you talks on spirituality and self-development that bring you back down to earth. Bridging the gap between ethereal ideas and mindful realism. These talks illuminate the magic in the mundane and facilitate discernment in the far out for a life rooted in wisdom. This podcast is for conscious seekers who are just opening up to spirituality and personal growth, or those of you who've been on that journey for a while, and you're realizing that things just are not what they seemed at first, or for those who are anywhere in between. I am so glad you're here. I invite you to either take a walk or sit down and relax with something nice and warm to drink, and just let this wash over you. Take what resonates, leave the rest, and just know that this is my gift to you. I hope that it serves you. I am so glad you're here, and I hope that you enjoy the show. Hello. Today we are doing part two of the dark side of divination and liberation through self-trust, and we'll be focusing on the self-trust piece. I've got here with me today, Alitza. Welcome back, Alitza. And for those of you who don't know uh, Alitza, please check out the first part of this conversation and we go into a little bit more detail about who she is, but she's a dear friend of mine and quite the intuitive woman. Um, So we really scratch the surface around self-trust and things that people can start to do to develop their psychic muscle during the last episode. So we decided to come back for part two and give you guys some more juicy stuff. Yeah, I'm so glad to be back. Let's dive in. (laughs) So in the last episode, we talked about the toxic patterns that can lead us towards divination and the toxic patterns that can ensue when we get addicted to it. Um, So today we're going to talk about what are ways that you can start to enhance your own intuition, tap into it and use it in a way that empowers you and not disempowers you. So one of the first things that is recommended to people when they're starting to get involved in spirituality is meditation. And part of this is to calm the nervous system. And another reason is to learn how to be in silent space, because that is when our intuition whispers to us. Of course, it's whispering to us all the time, but when we get silent, we have the opportunity to really hear the nuances. And when you become more um, skilled and practice with it, it's just, on autopilot and you can start to determine the difference between your brain and your intuition all the time. And so we'll we'll talk a little bit more about how to determine the difference. Um, And uh, one of my favorite ways to start playing around with um, different clairaudience, clairsentience, clairvoyance um, skills is to start to pay attention to my dreams. So the past couple months, my dreams have actually been quite vivid. And I attribute that to both where I'm at personally, but also uh, the astrology of the season. Um, But I think that, you know, those are two ways that um, you can start to explore on your own um, to get in touch with that voice. But I'm going to hand it over to Alitza. Alitza, do you want to talk a little bit about how to determine the difference between your thoughts and your intuitions? Yeah. Great. Just wanted to make sure that we mentioned something about meditation, because I've heard a lot of people say, oh, it's so difficult. You know, I can't do that. And I can't keep I cannot just calm my mind down. And I tend to say to people, you know what, you actually meditate all the time. You just are not aware of it. Every time you take a very deep breath, that's like a minute or a moment of meditation. That's what meditation is for. Um, some of us and some of us who are practice meditators, we still have every now and then problems while meditating. Our mind is very active. My mind is very active most of the time. And sometimes it's a struggle. So in that case, just simply sit down and just watch what's happening inside the brain. Like watch the thoughts, be the observer, but don't judge them. Just watch them pass. It's like on a highway. It's like you're observing a highway. Imagine the cars. Just the observation is meditative, you know, how the cars move. What also helped me is guided meditation because I focus on the, the voice. And that's when I forgot all, I forget all about my thoughts. But yeah, what about the, um, 
differentiating between the intuition voice, I call it the heart voice and the, the mind voice. Um, that's also in meditation. It happens also in meditation. For me, my mind voice or my ego voice is very loud, is very, you know, very, very sassy sometimes and like <laughs> very aggressive. <laughs> and my intuition, the way I hear it, inside is very calm very loving and sometimes i do have problems connecting with my intuition and what i've established that helps me is like to put a heart uh, to put a hand on my heart to take a deep breath and then listen and when i do that um or talk to my heart while handing by putting my hand there it just helps me to center to go back to my heart and then that calm lovely gentle voice appears and resurfaces so that's how I differentiate between the two voices. I think when we feel good, when, yeah, when we are in positive like vibe or state after we've heard our voice, the one we listen to, that's definitely intuition. And if we feel bad, if we feel some judgment, if we feel a little bit icky, that's definitely the mind or the ego. Yeah, that's great. I, I'm glad you brought up the um, challenge with meditation. Um, if people have an activated nervous system or they're in dysregulation, it can be hard to focus at all or sit still. So even a guided meditation could be quite agitating. So if that is the case, um, and you're not actively working with your nervous system with a somatic experiencing practitioner or trauma therapist, uh, you could just try while walking or try while dancing. Using movement can really help, um, get the body into a more calm state. So then you can um, sit with your mind as well. So um, yeah, the goal of meditation isn't to shut off our thoughts, although some people, uh, you know, that is their goal. Um, it's just about the breath and being present and calming the system down. Um, what you shared about the difference between the heart voice and the mind voice, I love that phrase. Um, even if it's not good news, it will feel like an expansion or a calm presence. And I can think back to one time in particular when I got some bad news, but it was finally the truth from somebody. And I just got really calm, even though it was not what I wanted to hear. So that time is when I anchored into myself, what that felt like, the difference. And so with trial and error, you can start to get used to and take log of your heart voice or your intuition and your ego voice. So one of um, the tips I suggest is to journal or keep lists or notes on your phone. And you can start to track back even before you even get started with present day. What are times that you can remember that you had a premonition or had a feeling and it ended up proving to be true? Start taking notes. Remember what it felt like in that moment when you felt that way ahead of time. And now moving forward through, you know, just messing around, say, I, I wanna, you know, see if um, it's true that I feel like this friend might call me today, write it down. Keep track of instances where you just have this, you know, this fleeting thought and write it down because oftentimes those intuitions are those quick fleeting thoughts. They're like whispers passing through because it's just like a, a nudge um, from your, your inner voice. So um, through getting used to your flavor and what it just feels like for you and getting used to the nuances of the different sensations and different um, styles of information that come through, you can start to get familiar with what your different versions of information sound and feel like to you. Definitely. I just wanted to mention that moving the body is definitely a big thing dancing and um i'm about to discover the, the power of belly dancing especially for us women how to move into the body to drop into the body and what i've noticed sometimes also while meditating but also while dancing is just to let go of the control and let the body move on its own i think that's also one of the best practices to just just be present in your body and connect with your body and it, with your intuition you know sometimes the body just moves and you follow it, you just observe it. And it's an it's amazing experience. I love that. Uh, one of my somatic mentors said to me, we're animals first. 
and body first. So if, if you're agitated or upset or in anxiety, what does the body need to calm down? Because the mind follows the body. So I love the practice of letting the body move. And at first, this might feel funny to you. You might question, well, how do I know what it wants to do? And it's just, again, play, trial and error. What are you inspired to do? I think people sometimes think that an inner voice or an intuition is going to be an auditory input. Like they're going to hear a voice out loud. It's very rare that somebody has that gift. So it's basically your own voice. It's just subtle. Um, or, you know, that those ego thoughts can be loud and repetitive and compulsive and incessant. That's not your intuition. So just to repeat, the intuition is going to feel like a whisper. It's going to feel fleeting. It's the ego mind that's really aggressive. Um, so using divination is another way to start to practice. So I really do encourage you to do these other things first because you're really going to want to get to a meditative state before using divination. Especially if you're new at it, it could be really your ego talking to you. And really our, our intent and our desire for certain messages is strong. So you could get answers from divination that are validating what you actually want, not what's actually best for you or true for you. Um, but Oracle cards are super simple and easy. You don't have to study them like the tarot. You can get um, a deck and it comes with a guidebook and you can look it up. Although I always encourage people to sit with it first before looking it up and see what comes to you. And then it might be fun to compare and see, does the author of this deck have similar insights into this imagery? That's true. I have an on and off relationship with my Oracle deck. Um, right now I'm um, in an, in the off part, but that definitely has helped me not in the way I always, when I use them, I ask the question, what is the message that I need to hear today? Not to ask about when I will get married, will I have kids, how many kids, when I'm going to meet the love of my life and all this kind of stuff. Um, just asking about messages, what I need to know today, what I need to focus on today. And most of the time it's just spot on. I, to, to this day, I'm still surprised how spot on the cards could be. But when you let go of the expectation, I think that's when the messages really appear and they can touch you and they come from like a good, well-intentioned place and not from the ego. Because, yeah, I've also had these experiences with the ego. Okay, I want to know the answer of that question. Well, guess not. You will not know the answer of that question because you're not meant to know it. And good, uh, good point with the on again, off again. I also, I haven't used Oracle cards for probably over a year. Um, but unless I sometimes use them in client sessions when they're requested or when I feel my intuition talking to me about it, but it is rare these days. Um, and, you know, I love what you're saying about not asking a specific question. And if you've been listening to this show, you'll hear me say over and over again that manifestations occur when you let go when you uh, least expect it, when you surrender. And the same goes with messages um, from your higher self, from the universe, whatever language works for you, a message, right? Um, and so if you can get to a place where you are just curious and not needing to know, like it's gonna fix something or fill a void or soothe anxiety, that's the route to take. If you are anxious, if you are freaking out, if you need to know, my advice to you is don't use divination. Not then. That's true. No, that's true. Definitely agree with that. I also think that art, um, being creative is very important or a good way. Maybe just drawing or painting and you don't have to be like Picasso. I don't think I can draw, but I think I've been drawn to that kind of creative um, outlet and um, just draw whatever comes to your mind or write some poetry every now and then I sit down journaling and suddenly there comes a poem or something like that I'm like okay that's weird so definitely art is a way to express to find yourself just let go of the expectation how it should look like and what your interpretation of art is and just be creative express yourself or singing that's my thing, because I think my throat chakra is very active. And I, I've been told that I, I have 
two heads or I think too much and that's why I need to talk a lot and singing is also my outlet, the way to express myself and to relax myself so singing is also a great way to connect with your intuition and to like escape the mind escape the ego because you're so out of your comfort zone today like I did a super crazy exercise you know like putting my tongue outside and trying to sing while your tongue is outside do that so it's completely out of your comfort zone you feel silly and that's the point you're you're that completely you know like in a childlike state where you're like okay let's do it let's try it out let's see what happens and that's also amazing part to to experience new things to see how you react to be curious about how you react and not to judge yourself how you're supposed to react to something or not loving that so if you if you don't know how to get started with creativity i actually have a show on creativity check the podcast a couple episodes back with laura smith the reason that creativity and art and singing and dancing are so good for developing our intuition is because they get you relaxed. They get you into that childlike state, like you said. And if you think about how kids sometimes blurt things out or they point things out that you thought you're hiding from them, it's because they're still in that innocence and childlike state. So doing those activities can get us back there. And it really is in that surrender state and you're relaxed. So that is when there isn't all this judgment or analysis and so um, I love, I love just imagining with your tongue out singing because it's, it's challenging yourself to be in new environments, using your brain in a different way, being in touch with yourself in a different way. And so when we're out of our typical habits and patterns, it gives ourselves the ability to be receptive to something new. And so if you're just learning how to get in touch with your intuition, that's new. So create, you know, a atmosphere where new is something that you're willing to be receptive to and i promise you it's going to sneak in oh yeah oh yeah uh another very very important i think for both of us way to get in touch with yourself is to turn off the laptop the tv the, the smartphone and just be do something else it might be just reading a book like a standard book with pages or go for a walk or do something talk to somebody um there is a great example for me um um millionaire coach women's coach that i follow it's a german one and i think a couple of months ago she signed off social media and she deleted all of her social media accounts the only outlet she has the only channel she uses is email and I've been listening to her recently and she was telling how much calmer she feels by deleting social media, by not being present on social media and how much more channeling she gets or how much more messages she gets just because she's present with herself. And I don't know if I was influenced, subconsciously influenced by her talk, but I've also noticed a couple, like the last couple of days I use social media less and less and I feel much more centered relax much more confident because I don't compare it I'm not bombarded with messages and I think that's something very important social media is a great tool but we have to be careful because it sneaks in and we don't know what kind of traps it sets for us especially with a comparison one absolutely and if we're being bombarded by messages that are outside of us, we don't have space to hear the messages within us. It's not just the imagery or the, the, con the text or the, the um, verbiage or information we're getting. It's also that the touching of the technology and the bright lights and um, the electromagnetic frequencies, they actually very much do have an impact on us. So, they make you anxious. They, they rev up your nervous system. So unless you're actively taking time to calm the nervous system, it's going to have a much more dramatic effect on you. So I even suggest to my clients, keeping your phone out of the bedroom at night, turning it on airplane mode when you're taking a nature walk, turning off your Wi-Fi router at night, um, and definitely limiting your screen time and then trusting yourself. If this is a day that you want to be really productive and engaged, go for it. If you feel like it's time to take 
uh, some space from it. It's funny that you say that you've taken some space the last couple of days, the last two days I have as well. <laughs> the previous week I was, I was posting a bunch of stuff. I was really inspired. So trusting your ebbs and flows, especially if you're a woman, you're going to feel more energetic during different times of your cycle. So just learning your flow, whether it's, you know, associated with your hormones or just your, your soul participating in that journey and in that, in those patterns is going to foster a connection to your inner guidance system. And the more you can get space out in nature or, you know, away from technology, the louder it's going to be, the calmer you're going to be, and the more familiar you're going to be with your own energy and your own space. Definitely. Something else that just came, came up, I think, a way, maybe an unusual way to connect with yourself, with your body, is to start eating cleaner or to start eating more fresh fruit, more fresh fruits and vegetables in general. Because I've been doing it myself and I, I notice the clarity. It's just clarity. I cannot describe it in any other way. I feel the reaction of my body towards foods. I've also stopped drinking alcohol for, I don't know, for maybe three months. I haven't, yeah, I didn't drink a lot before, but I decided to, you know, have a pause. And the clarity that also comes from this is amazing. You're just cleaner, clearer, and lighter. And the connection you develop with yourself while doing this, while taking care of your body, while moving the body and giving it clean food and fresh fruit, it's amazing. It's an unusual way, but it works and you get more self-confident about it because you do something good for your body and your body is grateful to you. I would challenge that it's unusual. I think it makes total sense because if we're a radio, we're picking up messages, we're gonna want to be, um, what do you call it, repaired. We're gonna be in good repair. Yeah. And so if this is our body, and it does well with fruits and vegetables and everybody's different. So some people do, you know, poorly with dairy and, and meat, some do better with, with higher proteins, higher fat. So everyone's different, but this is also an invitation to start tuning into your body and what your body wants, but keeping pesticides out, keeping synthetic fragrances out, um, making sure that you're getting movement and because our bodies are built to move, making sure that you're drinking filtered, highly filtered water, not just a Brita, but making sure that pesticides are out of it, heavy metals, um, hormones, because those are in our waterways, fluoride, um, chlorine. There's so much stuff that can really impact our immune system, impact um, how we feel in our body. And so I, gosh, I think it's been eight years since I like had probably got drunk. It's been three years since I've had a sip of alcohol, maybe four years. And um, people ask me all the time, oh, you know, were you in the program or are you an alcoholic? Not at all. I just, I had done a sugar detox at one point and I, like you, maybe had like a glass of wine every few weeks. Like I, it was very minimal, but even reducing it to zero um, from one or two a month had a huge impact on my intuition and it is poison. So taking out any poisons in your system is going to make your vessel more sensitive. And the challenge with that is once you're clean, you're much more aware of when you've been exposed to something that's disruptive for you. Like I can't be near laundry detergents that are fragrance. <laughs> um, it just drives me nuts. Um, so it's a blessing and a curse. However, um, I, it's a, a burden I'm willing to bear to, to reap the, the benefits of, of having such a honed in signal of, of what information I can get from the universe for myself. And I think regarding this one, um, before I used to be very anxious about being on a diet, not eating certain foods or not drinking alcohol because we live in a culture that fosters all of these things. And I was very anxious, how am I going to go to a restaurant or to a party or to a gathering and stuff like that. But I've noticed the moment when I decided that I'm doing it and I am standing behind my decision people are okay with it maybe just once or twice you will get asked why you're doing it or what's happening and i'm like okay i just want to do it and that's the only answer they get and 
I think they get more and more curious, okay, for how long, how long are you intending doing it and stuff like that. So it's more our anxiousness that gets projected and that's why we get questioned by others. And when we are completely 100% behind our own decisions, then it's okay. Yeah, I think you just kind of touched, touched on some advanced intuitive work, which is, is it my thoughts or their thoughts? And so that anxiety can often be, gosh, this is getting super out there, but it could be your judgment of yourself that they're picking up on and you're picking yeah. up on them picking up on you. So take that in for a minute, but that's real. And so just like you, I'm stoked that I don't drink alcohol. It, it's so, it's cheaper, it's easier, it's less than, you know, I don't have to feel sick at any point over being hung over. Um, for me, it's, it's great. So if somebody asks me why I don't drink and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so happy without it. They don't even question it. <laughs> so I'm so glad you brought that up because that whole I'm picking up on what they're picking up and what I'm picking up is what most people are functioning from. So social anxiety or fear of public speaking or body image shame, it really is our insecurities that have pro been projected on us from society that we're projecting onto the other person that's picking up on our projection and then we're, we're uncomfortable with their judgment. So it is really that our radars are bouncing off of each other. So the clearer you can get more in alignment with who you really are with what you value. And you're going to notice that people respond to that, treat you with more respect, more regard, and you inspire them to also do that for themselves. I am listening an audio book. I forgot the name of the author. Uh, we can share that later on. It's about eight steps of manifestation, I think. And she has, she suggested it an exercise called energetic check-in. And I love that because three times per day, you check how you feel. You check if this comes from the past or is it like an anxiety for something in the future? And you check, is it mine or is it not mine? Because a lot of the times these are things are not ours. And I love these exercises. And I think it's also, it's a great way or a great tool to check in where you're at, what are you feeling, if it's yours or if it's not yours. Yeah, I, I, when I've been teaching clients intuition work, I actually do have them start with a, is this mine or does it belong to somebody else? Um, and then it's a little cheeky, but you can say, uh, I send this back to the person who this belongs to or s return to sender. Um, and, you know, with all these things, intentions, everything. So, um, you know, we don't always have to use the words. It can just be the imagery or the, just the, the acceptance and knowledge of it. But as soon as we do acknowledge it, it starts to dissipate. And um, I love the energy check-ins throughout the day, starting to get familiar with how do I feel in this circumstance? How do I feel when I'm doing this activity? How do I feel when I'm sitting still? How do I feel when I eat uh, all organic? How do I feel when I eat fast food? And starting to notice how different your mind and your body respond to these different places. And, um, you know, I really think it is beneficial to write it down at the beginning because it's so easy for us to ignore or forget or uh, brush aside because it's you know, something we don't want to acknowledge. Um, but I think that you'll start to see that you really have a very clear intuition when you give yourself the space to tap into it. Definitely. I think writing is. It's just amazing, you know, the morning pages, the famous morning pages, automatic writing, just writing things down. It, it's amazing. And after you read what you wrote, you're like, wow, did that come from me? And sometimes it's just the brain, like a really brain dump. And then you wonder, wow, what things I have in my head? And I'm thinking about all of this crazy stuff. And sometimes it's just intuition. Very often it happens to me that I have like conversation. I'm writing as if two people are talking to each other. That happens a lot to me. I don't question it, I just go with it because it's also a very loving conversation or a very loving relationship. There is no aggression, there is no hate or no judgment, it's just as it is. Maybe it's me talking to me, that's a philosophical question and I'll leave it at that. This is a great segue because I think the last thing I want to share is if this is interesting to you, grab a friend who also is into this 
and have just conversations, spend more time with them. Um, see, you know, what their intuition is on something that you're working through or share anything that you get. I find that when I'm working with clients using divination, especially if I'm reading their astrological birth chart, I will just be going off on tangents and they'll say, you just took those words right out of my mouth. And I did, you know, I often use phrases I've never heard before. And that's what the case that that is, uh, when that happens, it's because it was something they were thinking. So just practice in these spaces with people who are open to it. And you'll find that you can start to trust yourself more because you're going to see the repetition of these patterns where you pulled words out of somebody's mind, or uh, you, you know, said that this was on your mind and your friend says, oh my God, yeah, I was just doing that. And so just beginning to, or continuing to track, um, for lack of a better word, your wins with your intuition um, what you focus on is what shows up more in your reality. So if you start focusing in all the places that you're intuitive, you're going to notice it's just starts flowing a lot more. That's a great advice. I mean, we can talk about it forever, but I think that's a great set of tools and techniques to start playing with your intuition. And maybe just as a final um, reminder, see it as a game, see it as a fun challenge, or not as, again, something to do that feels quiet and heavy. Just have fun with it, play with it. Just like we put together this show, right? We didn't script it. We just sat together, trusted that we would vibe off of each other and say what needed to be said. And it was fun. Exactly. It was so, so much fun. <laughs> thank you for joining me again. It's always such a pleasure to see you and share space with you. And I love you. Thank you for having me. I love you too. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Okay, thank you for listening and becoming part of this community. If you love this episode, I invite you to subscribe, share with someone you think would appreciate it, or leave a review. This helps me to learn what resonates with you so I can deliver more of what you want and reach more people who can benefit from this content. If you wanna reach me, please feel free to reach out on my website, www.beccaspirit.com. I would love to hear from you get any feedback, and know what's on your mind. Until next time, take great care.